Anderson Smith again, and today we're going to talk about depth perception, how we use vision to tell us how far away something is from us. When we deal with visual perception, we're really dealing with various kinds of qualities. For example, we can tell, for, we can detect forms, we can detect objects by being able to tell where the edges and borders of things are. We can detect color, color vision, and we also can perceive depth, how far away something is. There are two kinds of depth perception cues. There are binocular cues, where we use both, get feedback from both eyes, and then monocular cues, which don't require both eyes, and we can get, things, get information from just one eye. First, the binocular cues. Uh, there are three kinds of feedback coming uh, to the brain. One is retinal disparity. The fact that our two eyes are separated from each other, and as we stare at something, we have two images slightly apart from each other because the eyes are separated. This is the, uh, the, the binocular cue that's used for 3D movies, for example. They have two cameras uh, separated by the same distance as your two eyes are. They take pictures with those two cameras, and then by using glasses of different types, then they can fix it so you only see the information in the left from the left camera in your left eye and information from the right camera in your right eye, so you have retinal disparity and things look in three dimensions rather than two dimensions. When I was a child, I had something called lazy eye, where one of my eyes would sort of drift off and I would, oh, I would just be using one eye, which isn't good. And uh, so they, they developed this treatment where I put a Polaroid screen on the front of my television set and I wore Polaroid glasses so that with my left eye, I could only see the left side of the television set my right eye can only see the right side of the television set. And so when my eye drifted off, I actually could only see one side, and that was supposed to treat and keep me from doing that. It didn't work. I had surgery when I was a kid, and they fooled with the muscles so that I used both eyes now. So I had better depth perception. There's also feedback from accommodation. That is, as information comes into the eyes, the lenses change their shape to focus the information on the back of the retina, and in feedback from those muscles that control the lens actually provides us information as to how far something is from us, how much change that they have to make with the lenses. And then there's convergence, and that's as something is closer, my two eyes, will, to focus on it, would have to move, converge closer to the object. If it moves away from me, it would separate, and thus I can use the feedback from those muscles controlling the direction the eyes are pointed to uh, give me information about how far something is away. But we also have monocular cues. Uh, these are cues in the environment that we don't really need to have muscle feedback or two eyes to, to detect how far something is away. The first is position or relative height. And that idea is that if something is at the top of a visual field, it tends to be further away than if it's close to us at the bottom of the visual field. So things at the top or higher tends to be seen as further away. We also have relative motion, uh, and that is that as something is close or far away from us, it tends to move differently as we're moving. For example, if you're looking out the window of a car, hopefully when you're a passenger and not the driver, and you're looking at, at the side window, you notice that things that are far away from you tend to be moving with you, but things that are really close, like the side of the road, tend to be going in the opposite direction. So relative motion it tends to give us information about how far something is away. Also relative size. If you have two retinal stimulations that are exactly the same, but one is seen as being further away, it's going to be bigger than the one, because if it's further away and it's causing the same sensation on my retina, it must be bigger, relative size. Linear perspective is the fact that if you have parallel lines going into the distance, they become closer together. That's linear perspective. Then there's interposition, the fact that if an object is closer to me, it's going to be in front of an object that's further away. So if I bring it closer to me, it actually, or take it further away, it'll be seen as behind something. Interposition. And then finally, well, not finally, light and shadow. We can use light and shadow to the, where, where the shadow is to tell us whether something is far away or close to us. And then aerial perspective. Things that are further away tend to be seen as hazy, hazier than uh, things that are close to us. If you look at a mountain scene, you, the mountains that are further away are the ones that are the, have the most haziness, the ones that are close by are clearer. And we use all of these sort of cues, learned cues, to help us detect depth. Now here's an example of two of those monocular cues. One is linear perspective. 
the fact that the two railroad tracks are obviously parallel, but as they go into the distance, they converge, they become closer together, linear perspective. And because of that, because of perceiving the railroad track where the white bar is, is further away than the gold bar, even though they have exactly the same sensation, the same uh, stimulation of the retina, it's seen as bigger because it's clearly further away. So I can move that gold bar, which I've put on top, and you can see they are exactly the same size, even though the one at the top is seen as further away. Depth perception is one of those innate characteristics that we have. And this was actually demonstrated by Eleanor Gibson with her apparatus, which is called the visual cliff. And excuse my poor drawing of it. But if you paste the infant on the checkered uh, top of this, even though it has a glass pane, pane that goes all the way across. So this, the part that's clear with the, with the checkered drawing at the bottom of the cliff is safe because it's, it's a glass pane going across both sides. But you put the infant on the, on the checkered side, and the mother stands at the far side and says, come on, come here. The child will want to see the mother. The interesting thing is it will not cross the visual cliff. It will it'll move away from the visual cliff. It will cry if it wants to see the mom, but it will not wander out into the visual cliff. By the way, this is true of other animals, too. You can have a, 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 a goat, a lamb that's just uh, a few days old, but it is able to stand up and it won't go over to, to the visual cliff. So there does seem to be an innate fear of heights or ability to detect depth. Uh, but as we grow older, uh, it becomes much more complex as we learn all these other cues that makes depth perception more complex than just this sort of fear of falling off the cliff. Anyway, that's depth perception. Thank you.